Now, da for you, Lynette Morgan, Gwanido, Giachid Medal, Sassiant Argam Rai, and my blessed Miguel Canal, a Ganhad Leather Wask Heavy. Do you share a pnama am a fordini Kevnogi plant, our sector gradigo, truer pandemic? Mar thy group ama, where did you have a mount for the Hanod, Ernest of Loisendwetha, or Ganlanyad ear pandemic? I'm Elaine Ed Morgan. I'm the Minister for Health, uh, Mental Health, Wellbeing and the Welsh Language, and it's my pleasure to host the press conference today. I want to talk today about how we're supporting children and the creative sector throughout the pandemic. Now, these are two groups which have had a really difficult time over the course of the last year because of the impact of the restrictions. But first, I want to start with the very latest vaccination figures which have just been published. They show that more than 807,000 people have had their first dose, which is the equivalent to almost one in three of the adult population. And we're really starting to make progress now on second doses. There was an 80% increase in the number of people who had these yesterday. Now, turning to children, the latest Coronavirus and Me survey gives a really good insight into how children have been coping with the latest lockdown. And I want to thank the Children's Commissioner, Children in Wales and the Youth Parliament for their work on this really detailed set of findings, which will help us to continue to shape our response to the pandemic in a sensitive way. More than 20,000 children and young people took part in this second survey. Now, the results show that life has been difficult for children of all ages. They spoke about frustration and even anger about the impact of the pandemic on their lives. They spoke about missing friends and family members and about missing out on experiences. Teenagers talked about their worries about exams and their futures. Almost one in three 17 and 18 year olds said they were worried most of the time. Loneliness rates are high and not being able to see friends is recorded as having the biggest impact on children's lives, followed by not being able to see other family members and the impact of school and college closures. Getting children and young people back to school is absolutely our priority. On Friday, the First Minister will be setting out the results of the three-week review of the restrictions. The youngest children across Wales will be returning to school next week as part of our phased and flexible approach, and we continue to monitor and plan for a wider return. As the public health situation continues to improve and the evidence shows it's safe to do so, more children will be able to go back to school. Remote learning has been difficult for everyone and hats off to all those parents who've done an incredible job in terms of homeschooling over the last months. We know that most children and young people will thrive once they're back in the routine of school, daily lessons and seeing their friends. We will continue to work closely with local education authorities, with teaching and non-teaching staff unions to get children back to school in a safe and phased way. To support schools and children who are learning remotely, we'll be investing a further £15 million in education technology over the next financial year. This will continue the Hub Ed Tech programme in which we've already invested £92 million over the last two years. It'll help to transform digital infrastructure in all state schools in Wales and ensure learners have access to MiFi connectivity to the end of the school year. I want to turn now to the creative sector and the arts. Wales is known throughout the world for our arts and our culture. Promoting our talents in this sector is one of the key parts of our international strategy. But the last year has been one of the toughest on record for our creative sector. Because of the virus, there have been few outlets for our nation's immense talent and creativity. 
There have been barely any live performances for almost a year, and most creative output has moved online. We all hope that better days are ahead of us and that we'll soon see live music, performance, theatre and art return to our lives. Over the course of the year, we've provided a range of financial support for the creative sector to help it through the pandemic. We've made £63 million available through the Cultural Recovery Fund, which includes almost £20 million for the Freelancer Fund, which is unique to Wales. I wanted to share a couple of examples with you today about how this funding is supporting individuals and organisations as diverse as Nant Gorthean Trust, which is receiving funding from the Cultural Recovery Fund, and a beatboxer from Blaine I Gwent. Hugh Jones, who is the chair of Nant Gorthean Trust, has said that this funding will help sustain its workforce and improve what it can offer to help people learn Welsh when it's able to reopen again. In the end of the land at Welt, not good to say that I got in my fetal. Our freelancer fund is providing grants to 3,500 freelancers working throughout Wales. Beatboxer Dean Yenel is one of them. He holds songwriting sessions for young people. He calls them counselling sessions in disguise. It's also helped make filmmaker and writer Lewis Carter. It's allowed him to complete production on his latest documentary, Best Foot Forward, about the famous North Galland road races in Mountain Ash, which was released on New Year's Eve. Do in Valch dos Ben Hedu, Mordi and Gatli Kaidi, but only in Roy, in point three million and a Juan Egal Irev, e Hal Pirmidiet in Nigruama. I'm really pleased to announce today that we'll be providing an extra £1.3 million to support the Erd in its recovery and to help it rebuild. The Erd is one of Wales' largest third sector employers, providing a whole range of Welsh medium experiences and activities for young people, helping deliver the aims of our Cymraeg 2050 strategy of a million Welsh speakers and supporting community, youth and apprenticeship programmes. This funding will help safeguard key jobs at the Earth, helping it to start, rebuild and create new job opportunities. More than 60 additional staff will be employed and the Earth has plans to create up to 300 new Welsh medium apprenticeships over the next three years. I want to end with some good news. Hot on the heels of the success of this year's Dev Music Cymru, four of Wales's best-loved festivals, Festival of Voice, Focus Wales, Other Voices Cardigan and Aberystwyth Comedy Festival will be coming together to create Goyle 2021, a free online festival. The music and comedy has been filmed and recorded over recent months in Wales and around the world and it's going to be broadcast online over the weekend of March the 6th and the 7th. So don't forget to tune into what will be a real treat and a bit of release from our daily routines. So diolch am fawr and I'm now happy to take questions from journalists and all of the answers will be broadcast on our social media channels as usual. So I'm going to start with Nick Powell, ITV Wales. Uh, thank you, Minister. The Prime Minister in Cumbran this morning said there are continuous conversations between the UK and Welsh governments about how to exit lockdown. How are those conversations going? <laughs> um, thank you. Well, the relationship with the UK government and the Welsh government uh, during the pandemic has ebbed and flows. At times, uh, they are happy to engage with us quite intensively, and at other times, they don't speak to us for months. So, uh, obviously, uh, in an ideal world, we would like to be uh, coming out of the lockdown together. But at the end of the day, we will do what is right for us in Wales. And that will depend, of course, on the rates of infection and how quickly we can roll out uh, the vaccine and of course we are doing incredibly uh, well in Wales on that score uh, and so we will be making those decisions uh, of course on Friday in terms of what will happen in the next uh, phase uh, during our 21 day review um, but uh, I think for the longer term uh, we will have to look at our own 
um, uh, rates in Wales, and we will make that determination on what's best for Wales. Thank you. But nevertheless, do you accept it's at least desirable that the whole of the UK leaves lockdown in sync? I mean, I presume you wouldn't want English people allowed to travel at Easter and Welsh attractions not able to accommodate them. Uh, absolutely. In an ideal world, as I say, it would be great if we could have gone into this together and come out together. But we were determined in the Welsh Government to make sure we were following the evidence, following the science and following the data. That has not always been the case uh, elsewhere in the UK. Uh, but of course, in particular when it comes to tourism, um, then ideally we need to be seeing how we can work together uh, obviously, it's much more profitable for uh, the tourism sector uh, if, the, uh, if the English market is able to uh, open and if visitors from England are able to come as well. But we won't be doing this in a hurry. We will be taking our time. Uh, we will not be working to a, a fixed date timetable. We will be working according to the data and what's right for us in terms of making sure we don't see uh, an uptake again in that virus. Uh, Camlyn Davis, BBC Wales. Uh, Diolch, Winnie Dog, and I'd be grateful if you could respond to these questions in Welsh and English, please. Uh, we know that another new variant of coronavirus has been discovered, including two cases identified in Wales. I wonder what more you can tell us uh, about those cases and how concerned we should be. Diolch, um, Fawr, Wrth gwrs, achos y newydd o'r feriant yn, yn mynd i ddod yn gyson, ac wrth gwrs, i'n caru llygad ar y sefyllfa uh, o ran y feriant newydd. Um, I ni'n gwybod uh, bod y feriant De Afrika uh, hefyd yn bresennol, ond dim ond ychydig iawn o achosion sydd gyda ni yma yng Nghymru. Um, wrth gwrs, uh, mae e'n bwysig e'n bod ni gyd yn deall yn arbennig yn ystod yr amser yma, ein bod yn uh, ofynnol arno ni ar os gartre a dyna'r ffordd orau ein i stopio y feriant newydd yma rhag uh, lledu. Um, of course, we are aware of new variants. Uh, this is not going to be something that is going to uh, change uh, very soon. The fact is that the virus will change shape. It will create uh, new variants, and this is something that we're going to simply have to get used to. What we will be doing in the Welsh Government is keeping a very uh, strict eye on what is uh, is going on, on the, um, the, the way that that is likely to spread and how serious it is. Um, of course, we are aware that the South African variant is also present uh, in Wales. We have uh, several cases, most of which we can trace directly to South Africa, but we are concerned about um, three cases where we cannot um, really follow where that's come from. So we're doing a lot of research into that at the moment. But of course, uh, at the moment, uh, we're fairly confident that the vaccines uh, will uh, be able to help uh, contain uh, at least the, the, the illness uh, that people will suffer if they are exposed to these new variants. Uh, you mentioned that some children will be returning to school next week, three to seven-year-olds, and you said you'd be uh, monitoring and planning for the phased return of other age groups. The Welsh Local Government Association are asking for a clear timescale now for when other children will be able to go back to school so that staff and councils can prepare for that. Do you accept that that would be helpful, and is it something that you will look to provide uh, to schools across Wales? Uh, Diolch yma, Cymlyn. Uh, wrth gwrs, i'n nawedd fis iawn i gael plant nôl i'r ysgol. Uh, I'n i'n gobeithio fydd uh, rhai iengau trí i saith yn gallu, gallu mynd nôl wrth gwrs yr oedd nos nesa. Ond wrth gwrs yn y pen draw, mae'n bwysig yn bod i'n cael fwy o blant nôl i'r ysgol ac i'n i'n gobeithio rhoi fwy o fynylder a'r beth i'n i'n gobeithio yn y maes yma uh, ar ddydd Gwener, pryd fydd uh, prif wynidog yn rhoi fwy o syniad ynglyn a beth fydd yn cael eu rhyfhau nesa. Um, we, of course, are very anxious to get our children back to school. Uh, every day uh, that they are not back in school uh, is a, a day of, of waste in terms of uh, really trying to develop these children. And, of course, uh, parents doing a tremendous job at home in homeschooling. But ideally, we need to understand that the importance of socialisation 
um, and in particular uh, supporting those children from, from perhaps more deprived backgrounds. Uh, we will be uh, giving far more detail on what we're hoping to do next on, the, on Friday when we uh, come up with that 21-day review. Uh, and I do hope that the First Minister will be able to give a bit more clarity, uh, of course, to uh, teachers, to the WLGA and to parents in terms of what we're hoping to do in terms of a route map. Um, to reopen the schools uh, in, in a more uh, balanced way to make sure, of course, that we keep them safe, uh, but that we uh, really try and encourage uh, those children back to school. Um, can I ask Mark Smith, Wales Online, please? Thank you very much indeed, Minister. Um, firstly, with coronavirus infection rates and testing positivity rates continuing to fall to levels way below the winter peak, do you think there is a growing pressure on the Welsh Government to ease more coronavirus restrictions for the sake of people's mental health? And do you believe an appropriate balance is currently being struck between people's risk of contracting coronavirus and trying to improve the public's overall well-being? We're obviously really concerned about the public's well-being and we've seen uh, reports uh, and, and you can see simply from that um, report that was done by the Children's Commissioner uh, of, of the, the serious concerns that people have in terms of their mental health and well-being, uh, not just children but also the adult population. We know uh, that uh, Ipsos, for example, suggested that 36% of the population are lonely most of the time. So, of course, we're anxious to reopen as soon as this is safe to do that. Um, of course, we're really pleased that we're seeing the rates of the virus come down. I think we're on about 88 per 100,000 now. So that is a really positive step. And of course, alongside that, we are rolling out the vaccine in a really comprehensive way. Um, at some point, of course, we will therefore uh, make a, a judgment as to what we're able to open and what the risks are associated with that. But at this point in time, because of the new Kent variant, which is now the predominant variant within Wales, it, it is absolutely key that we stick to this lockdown as it is at the moment um, and uh, that we understand that the, when we release, it'll be in very small steps. We will assess uh, how the spread will, will increase as a result of that before moving on to the next stage. But we are intensely aware of the pressure on people. And that's why in the last review, we allowed people to exercise uh, when, w with one other person. Uh, and uh, you'll have to wait until the Friday to see if there will be uh, any further support in that, in that area. Thank you very much indeed. And, and secondly, um, obviously, we know that mental health services are sometimes referred to as Cinderella services as they are operating on li more limited funding. Uh, with the huge anticipated increase in demand for such services, um, can you confirm that people already having to wait for mental health services will not be made to wait longer because of the, this increased need? And will the Welsh Government increase the ring-fenced mental health budget to reflect this ongoing need? Well, we've said right from the beginning that mental health services must remain essential services, so they haven't been shut down at all during the pandemic. Uh, we're also very proud of the fact that we do have a very clear ring fence um, and that uh, in the next financial year, we'll be increasing the amount that we spend by £40 million. So that takes us about to uh, about £780 million that we spend per year on supporting people with mental health issues. Uh, so that support is there, and what I would urge people to do is to reach out for that support because it is available, and uh, people need to understand, in particular some sections of society that perhaps are less uh, likely to reach out for support. Uh, I'm thinking in particular black and ethnic minority communities, but also middle-aged men who are not great at reaching out for support. And I would uh, ask people to take up those opportunity. We have a call line uh, that is open 24-7, and uh, I would encourage people to use that. Can I move on now to Dan Wilson, LBC? Um, as Nick mentioned at the start, the Prime Minister is in South Wales this afternoon. He's been visiting a vaccination centre in Cumbran. Um, a few weeks ago, when he travelled north of the border to Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon made it quite clear that she felt his trip may not have been necessary. Does the Welsh Government feel 
that the Prime Minister's trip to Wales is necessary today, given that we are still under strict lockdown measures? Well, we have a stay at home message and you should not be travelling unless it's essential. I'm not sure if uh, Boris's uh, visit comes under the essential category, but of course he is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and has to make his own judgment on that. Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the important thing for us is to focus on uh, really making sure that we, we do the best for Wales uh, and, and of course we will continue to have discussions with Boris Johnson. But in an ideal world, uh, I think as many people as possible should uh, stay at home and uh, yes, in, in an ideal world, perhaps that should have happened in this instance. Thank you. And uh, we spent a night with South Wales Police over the weekend, tasked with breaking up illegal gatherings and house parties. Uh, more than 100 were issued across uh, the force area. Uh, the fine here for those attending house parties is currently £60, which is reduced, of course, to 30 if they're paid uh, within the first two weeks. Compare that to England with £800. Is this still not an argument that perhaps the fines and the penalties here are, are not enough, given the fact that many who we spoke to that were breaking the rules knew full well what they were doing? Well, the situation in Wales in relation to fines is, is, is that they increase every time you break them. And so that is something, and they can actually go up to a very high level. Uh, but of course, uh, what is good is that the police are now breaking up those, uh, those parties. Uh, and I would encourage them to continue to do that. But in an ideal world, people should not be gathering. You know, hopefully we haven't got a long time left now to, to really live through the rest of these, these dark days that we're living through uh, it's because we're hoping to see a release uh, in the, the near future. But now is not the time to, to, to relax. Now is the time to make sure that we can really dampen down on this uh, vac variant uh, and, the, and the, um, the pandemic. And let's make sure that people really try and adhere to those rules. And of course, uh, we keep all of those issues under review. Can I move now to Ellis Roberts? No, with you on. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Minister. Continuing it in the same vein, uh, really, uh, to what extent are you concerned that a point comes where fatigue starts to set in, that people feel that they can't meet family and friends, they very much want to do that? And in the end, some people may think, well, we can't do this anymore. So if, if you can answer in both languages as well. Gofyn at wyg gwneith o gibar ar adach chi'n poeni falla bod pobl yn dechrau lari ar ddiflasu ar reolau'r cyfnod clo. A mae'n abwynt y dod falla lle bydd pobl yn penderfynu allwn i ddim gwneud hyn i ddim mwy. Well, dwi yn dechlyn iawn bod pobl wedi cael digon os efallan, ni gyd i gael digon os efallan, ni gyd yn marw eisiau mynd allan uh, ag uh, i gwrdd o pobl eraill. Ond uh, beth sy'n bwysig nawr ein bod ni yn cadw at y rheolau, uh, achos uh, uh, beth di'n i ddim eisiau yw i rydhau a wedi'n gorfod mynd nôl mewn i, i sefyllfa lle ni'n cair gymdeithas lawr eto. Felly, um, dwi'n deall pam mae pobl wedi cael digon, uh, byddai ni uh, yn... yn gofyn i nhw uh, yn ymbyl ar bobl uh, i sicrhau nawr ei, ei bod nhw uh, yn ystod o ymysoedd nesaf, yn ystod o wythnosau nesaf yma, tan ein bod ni'n cael y vaccine allan i fwy o'r boblogaeth, ac wrth gwrs yn gobeithio o byth yn digwydd bod er, e, pobl yn y grwpiau mwyaf yna cyn diwedd mis ebrill yn cael y uh, 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 pigiad. Felly, dyna beth ni'n gobeithio fydd yn digwydd, a beth hwnna gobeithio'n rhoi cyflau ni rhoi yn y strad ag yna. Of course, we all understand that people have had enough. I mean, we've all had enough, and we are all desperate to get out of this situation, to be able to go out and meet people, uh, and to be able to undertake new activities. Uh, but there is just a few weeks left now before uh, we can really put a lid on the situation in Wales. What we can't risk is undoing all of that great work um, and, and throwing ourselves back into a situation where the rates will increase. I think the people of Wales have been incredible. They've been terrific. They have kept to the rules. They are continuing to keep to the rules uh, in the vast majority of, of cases. And I would plead with you, please, just for the next few weeks uh, to stay with us, to respect those rules, and let's see if we can get out of this dreadful situation. How much e easy do you think it will be, Minister, if you were actually able to give a precise date, if you said at the end of April, 
that's when lockdown restrictions would be lifted. How much of a difference would that make? Faint and house for the heights as Hachi and Gashi Raita, the Yad Hind Dansua. A bit popal and good bother with the Kavana earned or defend Britain. Well, need to skin a store of pandemic and my body in risk, eroid the other bath. Achos mar virus ama and virus didn't even mind virus now with. In Idal and Dusky, um, Agur, Scurs Mar, Mar Fight Board here and now it's sharp, like Bogadani, um, various Guahanal and and Golagi, Nagadini, uh, and Gatli Board more bendant and lean our risk. I don't know, Pam, Bethany Minine do Carusagada data, a sicker high, bony dim on wedding and hot high, Pam, I safi need honey. There's a real danger of giving a precise date. We've learned during the course of this pandemic of the dangers of setting a date, and I think it's been done far more in England than it has been done in Wales, where you set a date uh, only to have to roll back on that date. We're not going to put ourselves in that situation. Uh, we are going to follow the data, and what the last thing we want to do is to raise people's expectations just to dash them. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be sticking to uh, the plan as we have it at the moment. We'll watch the rates come down. We'll watch the increase in the vaccination. And hopefully then uh, we will be in a situation where when we release, we won't have to go back into uh, lockdown. That is the ideal situation that we're working towards. And we won't be able to do it unless the people of Wales come with us. Diolch <laughs> 